स्टैंडर्ड नाइन्थ मैथ्स चैप्टर नंबर फाइव इंट्रोडक्शन टू यूक्लिप्स ज्योमेट्री पार्ट टू वेल यस्टरडे यू गॉट इंट्रोड्यूस्ड टू यूक्लिप्स ज्योमेट्री यूक्लिप्स ज्योमेट्री इज नथिंग बट मॉडर्न ज्योमेट्री न्यू स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ ज्योमेट्री व्हिच कंटेन्स फोर पार्ट्स पार्ट वन अनडिफाइंड टर्म्स वी सॉ इन द प्रीवियस सेशन पार्ट टू डिफाइंड टर्म्स दैट टू वी सॉ Part three, axioms of postulate. We are going to see more in detail. And part four, theorems. These two parts we are going to see in this session. Okay, but uh, before that, well, let's try to understand this twelve statements, sentences, or phrases that are written here. you just observe this nicely okay in the blue in the deep sea in the deep sea what is the verb you have a group of words i have given you 12 group of words you have to say whether it is phrase or sentence say whether it is phrase or sentence there a little bit of grammar here Okay, but in the deep sea, is it phrase or sentence? Tell me. What is the verb here? No verb. Only object is there in the deep sea. A sentence cannot be without a verb. So this is phrase. P for phrase. I'll write. Okay. Next. He sang a beautiful song. Here, one, two, three, four, five. Five words are there. So, in this second one, you have a group of five words. Now, you have to tell me whether it is phrase or a sentence. Yes, he sang a beautiful song. What is the verb here? Sang. There is verb. There is subject. There is object. So, this is a sentence. Correct. Now you have to quickly tell me. The square of three is six. If you take three square, it is equal to six. That is what this group of words tell you. Don't think about what is right and what is wrong. Is it right or wrong? Don't think about that. Does it make any sense? Yes. Is is the verb. This is subject and this is object. So. This group of words does make a sense, so it is a sentence. When it strikes three, it is three o'clock. It's about the clock. Three times it strikes, right? When it strikes three, you have different sounds, right? Of clock. If you are having a wall clock these days, no such uh, strikes are there. But some years ago, all the wall clocks. Had strikes means if it becomes three o'clock, if the time is three o'clock, exactly at three o'clock, ting ting ting, three times it will strike. Different sounds, different uh, voices you will get. Okay, fine. So when it strikes three, it is three o'clock. Does it make a sense? Yes, meaningful sentence. So sentence. The sum of measures of angles of a triangle is 180. Follow whether it is sentence or phrase. Sentence, correct. From the tree, from the tree. What happened from the tree? What happened from the tree? No sense. It's not complete. So this is phrase. The sum of two and eight is ten. Two plus eight is equal to ten. Yes, it does make complete sense. So this is sentence. In this sentence, little bit of mathematics is involved. Arithmetic, okay? The product of five and two is ten. Yes, it does make complete sense. So sentence. When it strikes one, it is one o'clock. Yes, sentence. When it is one o'clock, it strikes one. Mean it gives sense. In the evening, what happened in the evening? There's no work, no subject. So this is phrase. Raj did his homework. 
Raj did his homework. Yes, complete sense. So this is a sentence. All right. So a group of words which gives complete sense is known as sentence. So here I'll just remove those group of words which are not sentence. The first one was phrase, I remove. Sixth one is phrase, I remove it. Then eleventh one is phrase. Now the rest all are sentences. Alright. Now we are going to read the sentences once again and find out whether it is true or false. Let's see. He sang a beautiful song. Somebody sang a song and we say he sang a beautiful song. Somebody said he sang a beautiful song. Now is the sentence true or false? Somebody may say yes. He sang beautiful song. Somebody say no I did not like it. So is this state sentence true? It's not always true. Everyone will may not say yes he sang a beautiful song. Somebody might say no it wasn't good. Okay so this sentence is not always true. Not always true. Not always true. And not even always false. So true or false. Sometimes it can be true. Sometimes it can be false. You can say that for some it is true. For some it is false. Let's see the second sentence. The square of 3 is 6. 3 squared means 3 into 3. 3 threes are 9. Yes, the square of 3 is 6. It makes complete sense. But definitely you can say the square of 3 is 9 and not 6. So this sentence is false. Ask anybody. Everyone will say false. But everyone should have knowledge. 3 square means 3 into 3 and that is equal to 9 and not 6. Next, when it strikes 3, tin takore pade. When it's 1, 2, 3. Alright, when it strikes 3, it is 3 o'clock. Say suppose if you have old wall clock. Ting, ting, ting. Tin bar hua. Tin bar hua. So what will you say? Yes, it is 3 o'clock. Okay. So this is definitely true. This statement is true. If it strikes 3, yes, it is 3 o'clock. Fine. No one can refuse. No, it won't be 3 o'clock. Okay. The sum of measures of all angles of a triangle is 180. You have learned this earlier. So this is true. Always true. The sum of 2 and 8 is 10. Find out the sum 2 plus 8, 10. Yes, it is true. The product of 5 and 2 is 10. 5 multiplied by 2. Is it 10? Yes. So it is always true. When it strikes 1, now this is very interesting. When it strikes 1, when it strikes 1, it is 1 o'clock. Chalo. When it strikes 5, 5 o'clock. When it strikes 3, 3 o'clock. When it strikes 12, 12 o'clock. When it strikes 10, 10 o'clock. But when it strikes 1, is it 1 o'clock? Maybe, may not be. Because even at 1.30 or 2.30 or 3.30, means half past any time, it strikes 1. So if it strikes 1 at 2.30, dhai baja hai. So, ek takora padega. Then you cannot say, oh, it's one o'clock. No, it can be half past any time. It can be 2.30, it can be 10.30, it can be 5.30. So, when it strikes one, ek takora pada, to one o'clock hi hoga, not sure. So, such bhi ho sakta hai, false bhi ho sakta hai. Right? Lekin every time it is not true. So, this is false. This sentence is definitely false. But okay. When it is one o'clock, it strikes one. Yes. When it is one o'clock, it is one It is one o'clock. So it will strike only one. So this is always true. Alright. Raj did his homework. 
राज ने अपना होमवर्क किया हो सकता है किया हो सकता है नहीं किया समबड़ी से लाई और राइट राज ने होमवर्क नहीं किया फिर भी बोल रहा है कि रा, राज डीड इज होमवर्क सो दिस कैन बी ट्रू और फॉल्स चिल्ड्रन अब मैं जहां हम लोग नॉट श्योर है वी आर नॉट श्योर वेदर इट इज ट्रू और फॉल्स आई एम रिमूविंग दो सेंटेंस ऑल्सो यहां ट्रू भी हो सकता है फॉल्स भी हो सकता है सेकंड में ट्रू भी हो सकता है और फॉल्स भी हो सकता है सो आई एम रिमूविंग दिस स्टेटमेंट लेकिन ये जो रिमेनिंग सेंटेंसेस हुए उसमें डेफिनेटली ट्रू कह सकते हैं या डेफिनेटली फॉल्स कह सकते हैं सो दिस टाइप ऑफ सेंटेंसेस ये जो सेंटेंसेस बचे विच आर आईदर डेफिनेटली ट्रू और डेफिनेटली फॉल्स दे आर कॉल स्टेटमेंट ऐसे सेंटेंसेस को कहते हैं स्टेटमेंट सो द स्क्वायर ऑफ थ्री सिक्स डेफिनेटली इट इज फॉल्स सो इट इज अ स्टेटमेंट ये सेंटेंस को आप स्टेटमेंट कह सकते हैं ये सेंटेंस को आप स्टेटमेंट कह सकते हैं ये ये सारे सेंटेंसेस को आप स्टेटमेंट कहते हैं लेकिन अभी जो मैंने निकाला और राइट दे आर नॉट स्टेटमेंट उसका मतलब क्या हुआ जो भी सेंटेंसेस है वो सारे के सारे स्टेटमेंट नहीं होते हैं और जो भी स्टेटमेंट है वो सारे के सारे सेंटेंसेस है सो एवरी सेंटेंस इज अज नॉट ऑलवेज अ स्टेटमेंट but every statement is always a sentence i hope you understood the word statement because now we are going to see statement not sentence statement means what a sentence which is definitely either true or false all right that means its truthfulness is definite uski sachai definite ho wo either false ho ya true is that clear to you okay so now i'm going to use the word statement all right that have you understood what is a statement it is a sentence which you can say definitely it is true or false right so what is a state axiom एक्सियोम का डेफिनेशन क्या कहेंगे अ स्टेट अ सेंटेंस अ सेंटेंस इंस्टेड ऑफ सेंटेंस यू कैन से स्टेटमेंट नाउ अ स्टेटमेंट विच इज यूनिवर्सली यूनिवर्सली accepted accepted true is known as axiom or postulate postulate all right try to understand i'll give you example we saw it yesterday the sun rises in the east yes no no one can say no if you are talking about earth and the sun all right on the earth the sun always rises in the east likewise the sun always sets in the west all right the earth is always spherical all this we have learned so this type of statements which are always true if i say um the earth is flat definitely you can say it's false so that also becomes possible does it become possible no it is only statement which is false the statement which is true is always axiom and it has to be accepted by the whole world then it is called axiom of possibility we have seen we call it possible if that true statement is associated with geometry and we call it axiom if that true statement is connected to whole of mathematics all right so a statement i hope you understood this word now statement it is a sentence which is universally accepted true is known as axiom as for example the sun rises in the east the earth is spherical the sun is the closest star to the earth the sun is the closest so all these statements which are universally accepted is axiom of 
possible. All right. Euclid had given some axioms. We are going to see that and try to understand. I'll remove this part. You can write the definition if you want. In fact, you should enter in your notebook. So you can pause or take a screenshot and write that definition. I'm removing it because I need to explain the postulates or exams given by Euclid. Now, all the seven statements that you see are true. That's why they are called axioms. And we call them axioms because they are not connected to geometry. They are not connected to geometry. That's why we call them axioms. But uh, in the previous session also I told you, if you want to call axiom as postulate, fine. If you want to call postulate as axioms, fine. No issue. But whatever is given in the textbook, axiom, then you call it axiom. And uh, <laughs> especially when the question is, State whether the given statement are axiom or postulate. So, you have exam ko exam hi bolna padega or postulate ko postulate ki bolna padega. All right? Chani. Let's see the first one. Things which are equal, these are the uh, axioms given by Euclid. And in your book, we are going to learn seven. All right? Things which are equal to the same thing are equal. Well, we'll have to understand that. Here is a Raj. He has five apples. All right. Here is Rahim. He also has five apples. All right. Then here is John. He also has five apples. All right. Okay. So Rahim has same number of apples as Raj. I told you, Raj and Rahim have same number of apples. Rahim and John also have same number of apples. So can you say Raj and John have same number of apples? Yes. What I said, Raj and Rahim have same number of apples and each of them have five apples. Then I say Rahim and John have equal number of apples and they have five each. So you can definitely say Raj and John have same number of apples and that is five each. Why? Or how can we try to understand that? Here, Rahim has five apples, same as Raj. And Rahim has same number of apples as John. So Rahim has same number of apples as Raj and John. So the number of apples with Raj and John are also equal. That is what this statement tries to say. Please, things which are equal... To the same thing, you can see, Raj has five apples as Rahim, John has five apples as Rahim. So Raj and John have same number of apples as Rahim. So Raj and John also have same number of apples. Don't get confused, please. Things which are equal to same thing are equal. Things which are equal to same thing are equal. The number of apples with uh, Raj is same as Rahim. The number of apples with Ra John is same as Rahim. So number of apples with Raj and John are also same. Let's take another example. A equal to B. B equal to C. Alright. Now you can see A, this is one and the same. You can write like this. A equal to B equal to C. Which is called transitivity property. So you can see a is equal to B. C is also equal to B. So these two things are equal to the same thing. So they are also equal. You can say A equal to C. One more example. Line L and line M. Okay. I'll use different colors. Line L is parallel to line M. And line M is parallel to line N. You can say L is parallel to M and N is also parallel to M. So green line and red line are parallel to same line M. So green line is parallel to red line. All right. Now this is different. Uh, it doesn't, uh, well, not re relevant to this statement. But these two are things which are equal 
two same things are equal. I hope you understood. Two things A and C are equal to B. So A and C are also equal. Next. Second Euclid's axiom. What it states? Please try to understand. If equals are added to equal, then wholes are equal. See, 5 and 5. 5 apples are there. Here also 5 apples are there. So you can, they are equal, isn't it? They are equal. But now what I do? In this 5 apples and in this 5 apples, I am adding 2 apples to both. 2 apples. Here also I am adding 2 apples. So now what becomes whole? Whole becomes 7 apples. Total becomes 7 apples. Here also total becomes 7 apples. So if 2 apples are added to 5, the whole is 7 apples. If 2 apples are added to 5, the whole is 7 apples. They are also equal. Yes. 5 plus 2 will be equal to 5 plus 2. If A is equal to B, then A plus 7 will be equal to B plus 7. If x is equal to y, x plus 10 is equal to y plus 10. I hope you have understood. What we are doing? We are adding 10. So equals are added. To the equals. Jo equal te, usme equal add kiya. So jo whole bana, whole. The wholes are also equal. So this is Euclid's second axiom. Okay. Third. Let's see. Third, if equals are subtracted from equals, the remainders are equal. Quite easy. We have 10 apples, let's say. And here also 10 apples. So we have equal. But I take away, I remove 3 apples from here. I remove 3 apples from here. And same I remove from there. 3 apples. Then what happens? 10 minus 3. And here also 10 minus 3. 10 minus 3. This is the remainders. After taking away, the remainder apples are 7. Here also 7 and they remain equal. That is the statement. If A equal to B, then A minus 3 is equal to B minus 3. If X is equal to Y, then X minus 10 is equal to Y minus 10. Subtract करने के बाद remainder मिलता है. Add करने के बाद whole मिलता है, total मिलता है. So third, if equals are subtracted, 10, 10, from the equal, x equal to y, then the remainders are also equal. Equals are a and b. What is uh, subtracted? 3, 3. So equals are subtracted. From the two equals, then the remainders are also equal. I hope you understood that. Fine. So that was postulate number 3. Postulate number 3. Things which coincide with each other are equal. Please, here is one line segment AB. Here is another line segment CD. The length of line segment AB is 5 cm. Length of line segment CD is also 5 cm. So if you pick up CD from here, and put on AB, then they will exactly overlap. Are you getting me? This is coinciding. So here, AB is equal to CD. So they are equal. Since these two line segments are coinciding with each other, they are equal. Let me show you something else. I have one triangle here, ABC. Another triangle, pick you up. Are they coinciding? Let's see. Are they overlapping? Which color triangle you can see? Blue, fine. Now which color triangle you can see? Only yellow. That means both the triangles are coinciding. So these two triangles are equal. Okay, let's see more. You have a blue circle and yellow circle. If they are coinciding, then they are equal. Let's see. Which circle you can see? Blue. Now what you can see? Only yellow. 
it's because they are exactly coinciding so these two circles are equal this circle is green and this is yellow try to coincide are they coinciding aapko green bhi dikhta hai yellow bhi dikhta hai so they are not coinciding so these two circles are not equal so things which coincide with each other are equal things when they coincide they are always equal i hope you understood that okay fine can we see the next the whole is always greater than a part obvious children aapke paas puri chapati hai उसमें से छोटा सा टुकड़ा निकाल दिया तो दैट स्मॉल पार्ट द होल अभी दो पार्ट मिल गए आपको रोटी के दो पार्ट्स मिल गए तो पूरी रोटी जो थी इट इज ऑलवेज बिगर देन दिस टू पार्ट्स द होल इज ऑलवेज बिगर देन द टू पार्ट हियर दिस इज द ओरिजिनल चपाती फ्रॉम द आई रिमूव सो मच पार्ट इतना पार्ट मैंने निकाल दिया so i got two parts of that chapati now so this whole is bigger than this part this is also bigger than this part very obvious say suppose aapke paas 10 apples hai i make two parts seven apples here and three apples here all right so this part the whole is greater than this part the whole is greater than the other part so that is the postulate number 5 the whole is greater than a part yes the whole is always greater than a part and if i say conversely a part is always smaller than the whole okay so that's it now let's see two more postulates or axioms either postulates or axioms here these are axioms okay because they are not, uh, not related to geometry number 6 things which are double of same things are always equal to one another See, these two things are equal. उसका डबल करो मल्टीप्लाई बाई टू करो टू इन टू एक्स इसका भी डबल करो सो डबल हो गया सो दे विल बी इक्वल इफ टू थिंग्स आर इक्वल दे आर डबल आर ऑल्सो इक्वल टू वन अनदर दैट इज द स्टेटमेंट ऑफ एक्सियम सिक्स नाउ थिंग्स विच आर हाउस ऑफ द सेम थिंग ए इक्वल टू बी अरे भाई इसका आधा करो डिवाइड बाई टू इसका भी आधा करो डिवाइड बाई टू सो दे आर ऑल्सो इक्वल इसका एग्जाम्पल सेवन इक्वल टू सेवन सेवन का डबल करो तो फोर्टीन सेवन का डबल करो फोर्टीन तो दे रिमेन इक्वल नाउ टेन इक्वल टू टेन दिस टू आर इक्वल टेन का आधा करो हाफ मेक हाफ ऑफ टेन सॉरी मेक हाफ ऑफ टेन पाई मेक हाफ ऑफ टेन पाई सो हाउस आर ऑल्सो इक्वल सो थिंग्स विच आर हाउस मीन्स आधा ऑफ सेम थिंग्स दिस टू थिंग्स आर सेम उसका आधा आधा कर दो so it remains equal to one and another got it children okay all right so we have seen the seven axioms given by euclid correct well now we are going to see the five postulates given by euclid okay first four are very easy fifth one yes you will have to use your brain to understand it well all right Now what it is first one? These are the five postulate. Postulate one, two, three, four, and five. Now these are true statements related to geometry. That's why they are called postulates. All right. First one, postulate one. A straight line may be drawn from any point to any other point. A straight line. may be drawn from any point to any other point all right
Let's see how from one point to other point line can be drawn. Say suppose here is one point and there is one point here. So from this point you can draw a line. Aap extend karo dhoni side. This is the point O let me say and this is point P. So a line can be drawn. Well there is point Q here. So from this point O you can draw a line. See this. Now this is a line passing through Q. Are there is point M here. So from this point O you can draw a line passing through M even. Are you getting me? So that is postulate 1. A, a straight line. You see, I have drawn three straight lines. May be drawn from any point. Which point we chose? O. To any other point. O, N, Q. O or P. O or M. So from any point O, a line, straight line can be drawn through any other point. This is possible. Means, if you have two points, you can draw a straight line. Koi bhi do point lo, so you can draw a straight line. That is what the postulate uh, one means to say. A straight line may be drawn from any point to any other point. Okay. Second, a terminated line can be produced. A terminated line can be produced. Terminated line means what? What is terminated line? This one. Here. This is terminated line. See, it is having end points. If you want to produce, you can produce it. Usko aage banana chante ho to banao. Extend up lambao. This side also. It can be produced. A terminated. Terminated means having two ends. Alright. Ye rahi dusri line segment. Here. With these two ends. You can produce it further. Matlab, extend to whatever length you want. Extend to whatever length you want. In both the directions. So that is postulate 2. A terminated line can be produced indefinitely. Endlessly. Alright. Third, a circle can be drawn with any center and any radius. If you want to draw a circle, you need a pair of compass. Right? Okay, so here is a pair of compass. Or you may call it rounder as well. So take any point as center. I take this point. I take this point as center. Alright? And that is the center. And using this radius, I can draw a circle. See this. I'm drawing a circle. Correct? Using the center. You can change the radius. Center is same. That point. And you can draw another circle. Are you getting me? Now if you want to take this point. Well, it sticks. Fine. If you want to take this point as center. Here is point center. And if you want to draw circle with any radius. You can draw, you can draw circle. Are you getting me children? It sticks. Okay, fine. Children, so that is the postulate number three. A circle can be drawn with any center and any radius. Any point can be chosen. Take its center, put this point there. And any radius you want, any radius you want, you take and draw the circle. So you can draw a circle taking any point as the center and any radius. This is postulate number three. It is about geometry. So postulate. Postulate number four. A right angles, all right angles actually. All right angles are equal to one another. Do you know what is right angle? Yes. Ye raha right angle. Dusra right angle. Is ke upar lagao. They will overlap. Take another right angle. Are baba ye raha. This is another right angle. Is ke upar lagao. They will coincide. And we have seen. 
if two things coincide then they are equal so do right angle le lo 5 le lo 10 le lo they will coincide so all right angles are coincide that means they are equal so there the statement of postulate four all right angles are equal to one another all right so first four postulates are very simple i have made the work untidy okay because there is no space to explain and if i write this statement one by one and explain then the video becomes too long okay i hope you have understood should i repeat quickly yes postulate one a straight line may be drawn from any point to any other point choose any point take any other point a straight line can be drawn through it that is postulate one postulate two a terminated line segment can be produced indefinitely a line segment having two end point usko aage badha sakte hai opposite direction mein indefinitely jahan tak aap badhana chahte ho postulate number 3 a circle can be drawn with any center and any radius koi bhi point le lo as center uske upar pair of compass ka point rakho koi bhi radius lo aur circle draw kar lo so a circle can be drawn with any center any point as center and any radius and all right angles are equal to one another because they coincide now i will erase this part so that i have space to explain the fifth postulate which is slightly tough to run okay uh, now this statement itself is very tough to understand okay uh, first of all few things we'll discuss and then we'll read the statement these are parallel lines and this is intersected by a transversal if l is parallel to m then this is angle number 1 angle number 2 angle number 3 angle number 4 angle number 5 angle number 6 angle number 7 and angle number 8 do you remember all right this angle 3 and angle 6 ye dono parallel line ke andar hai aur transversal ke ek hi baju hai so this angle 3 Angle three and angle six is known as a pair of what number name is pair of interior angles. Interior angles on the same side, on the same side of the transversal. Children, you have learned that. You have learned that alternate angles, corresponding angles, linear angles. This year you are going to learn again. Okay. But you know, angle three and angle six, they are called interior angles of the same side of transversal. Similarly, angle four and five, ये transversal के ये बाजू है, ये transversal के ये बाजू है, और ये चारों angles दो parallel line के अंदर हैं, so they are interior. And three and six make a pair of interior angles on one side of transversal. Four and five make a pair of interior angles on the other side. so we have two pairs of interior angles on the same side of transverse all right children you know what is right angle angle having measure exactly 90 you know what is obtuse angle angle having measure more than 90 and if you know what is acute angle angle having measure less than 90 say suppose you have two angles and each is a right angle two right angles then what is the total of this two right angles What is the total measure? Ninety plus ninety. So it will be, so it will be more than ninety plus ninety is one eighty. So it will be one eighty. If uh, some of if two angles are obtuse angle, if two angles are obtuse angle, means first one is more than ninety and other one is also more than one ninety. One sorry, first one is more than ninety and other one is also more than ninety. So what is the whole measure of these two angles? 90 plus 90, but it is more than 90. 90 plus 90 is 180. But more than 90 plus more than 90 will give you more than 180. Are you getting me? And if it is both are acute angle, 90 plus 90 is 180. But less than 90 plus less than 90 will be less than 180. Please, if two angles are right angle, then the whole measure of the two angle is exactly 180. If two angles are 
obtuse, then total measure, the whole measure of two angles will be more than 180. If two angles are acute, then the whole measure of these two angles will be less than 180. Okay, clear? Chali. Yeah, aapko ye do line kaisi lagti hai, children? How are these two lines? Parallel. Kyo parallel hai? Kyunki iska aur iska total measure 180 hai. Ye angle, angle 3 plus angle 6, the total measure is 180. Now look here. Please. These are not parallel lines. And this is the transversal. Yadi aap ye angle ko dekhoge. Ye angle ko dekhoge. This is interior angle one on one side. These are interior angles on the same side of transversal. Ye acute angle dikta hai. Acute. Can you see that? Or ye bhi acute angle dikta hai. Alright. Aap dono ka total karenge to less than 180. Ye baju less than 180 hoga. Or ye baju. Ye obtuse angle hai. Dikta hai more than 180. Ye bhi obtuse angle hai. So ye interior angles on the same side of transversal ka total karenge to. More than 180. Ab dekho. Yadi. Do interior angles on the same side of transversal equal to 180 ho. To do no line parallel ho. Ye, ye 180 to ye bhi 180 ho ga. So do no parallel ho. Yaha. Total measure is less than 180. It is less than 180. Matlab less than 90 plus 90. Matlab less than two right angles. So, wo side, these lines are going to meet. Wo line, wo side, the lines are not parallel. Because total measure of interior angles is less than 180. Jo side pe less than 180 hai, wo side pe dono line ek dusre ko intersect karegi. Ya, ye baju dekho. Ye baju dekho. What is the total measure? More than 180. Matlab more than 90 plus 90. Matlab more than two right angles. More than two right angles. So, ye interior pairs of angles has measure more than 180. That means more than two right angles. Aap dekho, isko extend karo. You know, endlessly you can produce. So, they will never meet each other. Wo aage jayega, lekin they will never meet each other. Can you see? Once again, difficult to understand. If in pair of interior angles on the same side of a transversal, the whole measure is equal to 180, in other words, is equal to two right angles, then those lines are going to be parallel. All right. If interior angles, a pair of interior angles on the same side of transversal, their whole measure is less than 180, but the less than two right angles, then those two lines will meet each other when X, when produce further on that side. If interior angles on the same side of transversal, if their whole measure is more than 180, matlab more than two right angles, then if the lines are produced on that side, they will never meet each other. This is the statement here. Still not easy children. Ab thoda sa samaj mein aayega. Let's try to understand what the statement says. Alright? But before we read the statement, once again, this is transversal. And these are two lines. A90, A90. So, A interior angles, 90 plus 90, matlab 180, two right angles. A, dekh lo, please. A angle or A angle, interior angles on the same side of transversal. Ye aapko acute lagta hai. Less than 90. Ye bhi less than 90 hai. So this will be less than 90 plus 90. Matlab less than 180 hoga. On this side, the pair of interior angles, their whole measure is less than 90 degree. So if you produce the lines, they will meet. Dekh lijiye. Aap produce karenge to they will meet. Alright. Third one. This is transversal. And these are two lines. Alright. Aap is bar ye baadu ke angle. This is obtuse angle. This is also obtuse angle. So whole measure of these two angles is more than 90 plus 90. So it will be more than 180. Or you can say more than two right angles. So if you produce these lines on this side, you will see they will never meet each other. That is the statement. All right. Let's see. Sure. If a straight line 
falling on two straight lines. These are two straight lines and okay. L and M are two straight lines and another line T falls on it. Falling matlab, today we, call, we say intersect. T intersects L and M makes interior angles. Jo interior angles, ye ho sakta hai, ye ho sakta hai, ya ye ho sakta hai. Makes interior angles on the same side of it, on the same side of it, on the same side of transversal. Taken together, means if we total 90 plus 90, acute plus acute, obtuse plus obtuse. Taken together is, is actually, is less than two right angles. Borrow, in this case, it is equal to two right angles. In this case, it is less than two right angles. And in this case, it is more than two right angles. But here in the postulate part, they say is less than two right angles, means this one. Then the two straight lines it produces. Ye jo acute angle hai, acute angle hai. Uski side, o direction mein, if these two straight lines are produced, indefinitely meet on that side. Usi side pe kahi na kahi wo milenge. Which is the sum of the angle less than two right angles. Yes, sum of angle is less than two right angles. Then the lines produced will meet each other. This is postulate number five. I hope you have understood. Now, no time is left for theorems to be explained. I thought in this session we would be able to finish theorem. But maybe I have over explained. I hope you have understood. Okay. So, tomorrow we start with the fourth structure of Euclid's geometry and that is theorem. Very little we have in the theorem. In this chapter, we don't have to discuss much about theorems. Okay. Yeah. From uh, specially uh, uh, triangle chapter there there are plenty of theorems to solve, solve. okay fine so enough for today's session goodbye